Welcome back to the North American LCS. If you're here, you get cool stuff like that and you get to meet the players. Right now, we're joined by TSM's Reginald Hot Office 2014 debut. You said the hibernation <laughs> was about five months there, and then you just put a whole bunch of playtime in in Monday. How kind of anxious were you coming into this game? So, I mean, the pressure, like a lot of people were telling me that there was a lot of pressure for me, right? Mm. But I didnn't feel like there was any pressure because mainly, because Bjergsen's so good, right? It's obvious that I'm not going to live up to his expectations. So if I do well, that just means that I'm going to get a lot of hype. But if I do bad, it's expected because I haven't played for since Worlds. And then I recently just started spamming a bunch of games starting like on Monday when and I got back from San Francisco. And what were your days like once you realized you were going to be playing this week instead of Bjergsen? Yeah, so since I've uh, taken a lot of the business side of solo mid, like I have to keep my schedule. I can't really push it off. I can't mm -hmm. be like, I can't do this because I have to play. I have to do what I'm doing now and also play. So my schedule is probably like, I wake up at 8 a.m. I have meetings like all the way till two. I play from two to 10 for just scrims. And then mm. since my mechanics are really bad, right, I've been playing solo queue from 10 to like two to four. And I just try to wake up at 8 a.m. like every day. So it's like, I've been like pretty much all just constantly oh, wow. drinking energy drinks. Like <laughs> I'm completely filled on energy drinks right now. How long have you been doing that for with the limited sleep and the entire day of working? Just, uh, just since Monday till now. Okay. So like. I, I naturally woke up at 7 a.m. today, even though I was supposed to sleep in more for the mm -hmm. match. Like, it was, it was just like 7 a.m. I just naturally woke up. I'm like, I woke up, I'm like, oh, wow, today's LCS, I should sleep in. So I tried to sleep, but I just couldn't sleep, so I played solo queue, like, during the morning. <laughs> over and over. And how was it making it back to the stage? Was it like riding a bike? Did it feel the same? It was a lot more comfortable, mainly because usually I, when going in matches, I would, I would be a little bit nervous and I would just like cough or like just, just be scared from the matches. But going into these matches, um, I just keep it simple. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to try my best. And if I lose, my team, teammates would expect it. Like going into these matches, Turtle is like, you're going to feed, you're going to fail, we're going <laughs> to lose. Damn it. Can't wait, to get, can't wait for Bjergs to come back. And so my expectations are already really low. But when we went to scrims, I actually did really well in scrims. So they had a higher expectations of me. Uh, after the scrims. And going off that real quick, when Scar got level two really fast in mid and he hit you up, were you kind of like, all right, here we go? Yeah, so I, did, I totally didn't expect that because usually when I, I used to play a lot more, I would account for every single creep. Like, he's one creep till two. I kind of just go in lane, go YOLO. I'm like, all right, I'm just in a farm. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then wait to mid game, group up. So I, I, I don't really pay attention to those the small things that actually matter a lot in competitive play. So it was, it was my bad on that. But just managing the creep wave is really important, and that's something that I wasn't mm -hmm. able to do that game. So he put a lot of pressure on me. But by, um, by mid-game and team fights, I, I did a really good job killing Jinx, so it, it made up for it, and we were able to pull ahead. Yeah. And how comfortable are you guys feeling now? Obviously, the team seems very elated. We're going to bring up a, a roll clip here of after the game. You guys were so excited. Obviously, Dyrus coming Big right Dyrus to you. Hug. You guys had all huge plays. What's it feel like to be back with the team for a few games? Uh, I mean, it feels nice, but generally overall, I'm still working with the team really regularly. Like, uh, I would watch their scrims from time to time, probably like once or twice a week. Uh, lately, not, not so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm very involved with the team. Like, um, my, like, I choose the direction of their strategy. Like, they come to me for, mm -hmm. for advice, right? So whenever they're doing bad in scrims, they're like, hey, Reggie, like, we're losing right now. How can we make it better? And I just, I just walk them through it and really help them with their strategy. So I'm, I'm pretty much their like part-time coach. So mm -hmm. I, I, I do work a lot with the team. So it wasn't like out of the blue. Oh, I'm back here from five months. Right. I've just been helping them instead of playing. So my mechanics are a little bit off. Do you have any advice on Wild Turtle's full offensive item Sivir build? You normally see a defensive item on someone. Double Bloodthirster. He won. Yeah. So Turtle, Turtles is like, I'm gonna go hard this game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry you. And uh, uh, basically, that game he did really well. Mm -hmm. So um, that was that build was fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't really have much to say about that build, but uh, we we're really ahead already, so it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I actually want to bring up kind of a mid to late game team fight where you did start to excel. If we get this on the screen, it was in the bottom lane, and I want you to talk me through what your goal was on Zed here and why TSM was able to win this fight so cleanly. So I mean, the biggest thing right here is like we're a siege, right? And it's a huge mm -hmm. stalemate. But uh, Expecial is able to pull, get a pull on Annie, and I knew that they're gonna blow everything on, on our t my teammates. So I was like, all right, if I sneak around, I can go on Jenks, and if I snipe him, we're guaranteed to win the fight. Because after that hook, it, it was just it was just a huge snowball from there. So I just jumped on Jenks, um, 
and try to do as much damage as possible, and then I just ulted out. I actually thought I was going to die there, but uh, luckily I, like, I survived with barely any HP. Yeah, and that was actually the second time that game where you just barely ticked on Makuta Pyatt with Zed. You say you haven't been playing much Zed, but it seemed like you really managed your damage well in both those engagements. Actually, to be honest, it wasn't calculated at all. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going all in on this guy. Yeah. Like uh, When we caught him middle, and that was a like, 4v4 team fight, and that was a really crucial point in the game. I saw that Jinx was all alone because they were split, and I was like, all right, this is my only opportunity to win this game. I'm going all in because we're going to lose the fight regardless if I couldn't uh, kill Jinx. So I was like, all right, I'm going all in on Jinx. And it wasn't calculated, trust me. I'm like, <laughs> I think he's going to die, but I'm not sure. I'm going to go all in anyways. And um, Annie and uh, Evelyn walked over there. Annie used his ult on me, and uh, Jinx still died, so we came up way ahead on that. Yeah, I mean, you had a couple close calls for sure, but another thing... Uh, I remember watching your vlog for when you're saying you're coming in this week. You're expecting TSM to take a hit in the standings for kind of long-term success because Bjergsen will get his visa stuff sorted. But with the Cloud9 defeat today, Andrew win now, you're not going to be dealing with a loss in the standings. Talk to me about that. I mean, it, it's, it's obvious that the, the TSM with Bjergsen is better, right? So I would mm -hmm. assume that we would take a hit in the standings. So, uh, and, and plus we're playing Cloud9. They're a really strong team. But... Uh, we came up ahead mainly because I, I guess that they're, the, the NA scene is progressing in terms of team play, but like mm -hmm. individual play, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same right now. And how did you guys approach this game going in for calls? Did you feel like you'd still be able to throw your voice out in those team fights, or were you kind of on a special mission when you were doing the Zed kind of sneak arounds? I, I, I was pretty much on a special mission because I was really <laughs> focused on my own play. I'm like, all right, all I have to do is not feed and kill Jinx and we'll win this game. So I was really focused on my own play mm -hmm. to make it, to like really making sure that uh, I hit everything, I do everything right. Mainly because when I used to play before, I would uh, make the calls for everything and my, I, would lack, like, I would lack a lot of my individual skill. Like I wouldn't be able to focus right. on my own play, so I didn't do as well. And so when I was focusing on my own play, I was able to do, go even and uh, do well in team fights. And I, like, that's all I needed to do. Our bot lane was playing really well. Our top lane um, outscaled uh, Trendle, even though like he had a rough start. So we we were able to just pull the, like to the victory. Mm -hmm. And now going into the game against Cloud9 tomorrow, do you have any extra confidence as you've been able to get the one win against Dignitas that may or may not have expected? I mean, it sure feels good to win, but uh, still same, same um, mindset going in, trying mm -hmm. my best. And if we lose, we lose. If we win, then like that's awesome, because. Uh, I think we're still going to be rank one by the time Bjergsen comes back. We're like, all right, dude, we're rank yeah. one, peace. And then hopefully he can still hold it. All right, so you, you, you know, another Cloud9 question. You guys have yeah. yet to put a scratch in the, the loss column for them. Is this going to be the time, and could it be well, with as, you? As you on the roster. Right, yeah. Winless against Cloud9, hmm. unfortunately. This is your last oh, chance. Oh, man, why do you have to bring this up in the interview <laughs> now? <laughs> oh, I feel ashamed. But, uh, yeah, that would be really nice to end my career with a, a victory against Cloud. And I'm like, yeah, we wouldn't want eight against you, but at least I won, you know. So, Or I can say, like, I won last. But, um, yeah, hopefully we can pull ahead. I, I think it's going to be a tough game. I feel like if uh, we get to the team fighting phase, we have a really good chance of winning. But uh, individually, I think that High might be able to beat me middle just because, like, I don't know. My champion was really small, and I, I really need to focus on the mechanics. Mm -hmm. But even just kind of taking a small step back, realizing now as kind of a coach and the recent success of TSM, knowing you've been with the organization since the start, mm -hmm. how does it kind of feel to know how popular you guys are right now? It feels really great because we've been here since the start, you know, and um, I think that one of the biggest things is we're really good to our fans. So, like, just looking at three years back, it's been so different. And, like, just seeing the fans come out just to see us, it, it feels great. Like... I, I, there, I don't think there's any words to describe it right now, but it, it's, it's awesome to see if fans just come and support us every single week. It's, it's not like one week there's like 10, 20 yeah. people. There's like the whole entire crowd is filled every single week, and a lot of them are TSM fans, and it feels really good to hear those TSM chants when we're playing. But it's kind of, I, I, feel, I, I get kind of distracted a little bit, but <laughs> overall <laughs> it, it feels really good. I mean, it has to. It, it's, it's hard to give back to the, the fans because they give so much. Yeah. So wins are kind of the only thing you can work with, and then you give a little bit more by taking the time after the games. And talking about after games, with the win tonight, obviously you guys are still going to recuperate for tomorrow. What's tonight going to be like? Tonight for me is going to be a lot of solo queue and uh, planning for C9. I mm -hmm. think the, the biggest thing I can really go into that match with is just focusing on myself and making sure that I'm not dead weight. And if I do really well, then all the better. Yeah, and... Last match of the day, we have EG versus Coast. Care to give a prediction for that next match? I think that Coast is going to win if they don't want to play bad champions. Mm. Pretty straightforward. 
answer. Out of the champion select, right from the gate. Yeah. All right, Reginald, thank you very much. Congratulations on the return win and possibly another one tomorrow against Cloud9. All right, to take us into our final LCS game, let's throw it over to Freak and Kobe. Take it away, gents. <laughs> thank you very much, Riv. If they don't play bad champions, they're going to win. It's slightly more specific than if we don't lose, we're going to win. Reggie's improving his prediction calling. He all. He got first-hand experience now. That was his, yeah. his coaching was just, if you don't lose, then you'll win. Now mm -hmm. that he's played the game, he, he, player, he picks champions <laughs> and then wins the game. So, of course, without further ado, let's get to it. Team Coast versus Evil Geniuses. This should be a great match. These teams have similar play styles, and they started to hit their stride in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, Coast in particular, he had, or they had a huge week dealing TSM their first defeat since week one, and that was with Burger King on the team. So yeah. that broke their 11-game win streak. And, of course, they're able to TSM's. do it without, yeah, broke TSM's 11-game win streak. And these guys were able to do it without getting back into Jackson top lane, without needling in the mid lane, without the heavy split push. They did something else here. Yeah, both these teams really being bring incredibly strong solo lanes to the game. Shifter and Pobelter had the highest KDAs of Week 6 for the mid lane. And then Coast game against CLG, Zan Spartan was the only person on his team to score kills, with Shifter getting two assists, and the rest of the team having a 0% kill participation. So the rest of Coast has to step it up, because their solo yeah. lanes are, literally did all the work in the last one. Yeah, it's true. Even though Aphromu said in our, our like beginning of the day interview, he said, oh yeah, Coast is in the top four bottom lanes. That's why Double Lift was like, what? Yeah, and Double didn't agree, to be fair. He didn't agree, but I mean, we had some, some guys saying they're really good, and we'll see if they step up here. Uh, we have seen Evil Genius's solo lanes as well put up big numbers, just like in their win over Dignitas this last week. Yeah, uh, Snoopy kept the pressure on the mid and the top lane. He was balancing there. Uh, he got Inox and Pobelter both ahead, and it resulted in the biggest win of the split for them. To give you an idea of how well that game went, Inox playing a top lane Gragas ended the game 6-1-5 and five with an 11 KDA, while Pobelter did not die a single time on his way to those seven kills that he racked up. Yeah, pretty good score for these guys overall. Now, in their two meetings, Coast has gotten the upper hand both times, but uh, they say if evil geniuses can capitalize on their individual strengths, they're going to be a dangerous opponent. Coast has had them um, ups and downs, and they started like pretty okay, and then shaky again. And now a lot of their wins are against us, actually. So we gotta respect them for sure. EG's problem is they don't know exactly where their strengths lie as a team, and I think once they understand the strengths of each individual on their team and really utilize them, I think they'll become a stronger team. The biggest thing you need to watch out for in Coast is that they're. Silence Spartan getting these hyper carries that scale really well into the late game. Last weekend, they had it completely out rotated us and they managed to stall us out completely. So, if they can do that and keep out rotating us, then they have a fair shot at winning. So, we gotta make sure we don't give them what they want and then identify the way they're gonna play the game. How are we gonna play the game? Not what are we gonna play, but how are we gonna play and how are we gonna counter what they do. We have been doing pretty well recently, but I don't think we should get ahead of ourselves because EG is still a very good team and we could still lose to them. So, I think. We're going to just have to be on our toes, and I think we can take them down. So it's the how. How you play the game, yeah. not what you play. Contrary to the uh, just don't pick bad champions. We're getting even more in-depth. Mm. But Actually, on a, serious note, on a serious note, I do like that. There's um, a long-time um, RTS player, Grubby, who uh, like eight years ago had a line. He said, whenever I'm playing a game, I envision how I win the game, like what happens that makes my opponent surrender, and he plays for that status. Yeah. And so he kind of like works from his from like the back in and sort of goes for the Start with goal. your win condition and yeah. come all the way back to how do I how do I get there? Yeah, so we'll see how the teams can visualize it. Let's check out the starting lineup for these guys. On the blue side, that is gonna be Coast. Zion Spartan in the top lane, Nintendo in the jungle, Shifter in mid with Fusion on AD carry, and Daydream on support. And on the red side, it is evil geniuses. Up top is Inox. In the jungle, it's Snoope, Pobelter's mid, yellow Pete on AD carry, and Krepo on support. It's gonna be a fun game for these guys and Honestly, it's, 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 it's interesting because it's these like late comers into the season, right? Coast went from eighth place at the beginning of, I believe, week five mm -hmm. into tied for fifth, about to take sole control. The Gintas got a loss here, so they're even closer to getting top four. And Coast had this gigantic rise of late, including their win over TSM. Evil Genius has, again, similar situation. Started out really slow in the beginning of the season. Very few wins. They're up to fifth place as well, and they're going to start breaking out. And I want to see if these guys can keep their sort of forward momentum and get some more wins in the season. Yeah, and especially against each other. These two yeah. guys, are, these two teams, yeah. have spent a lot of time with each other outside of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and as well, they talked about a lot of the wins that Coast have got are actually yeah. against EG. Uh, there's a little bit of a rivalry brewing between them. 
It is. We'll see how this one goes with this one. Although, some people say it's not a rivalry if the other team doesn't win any. So, EG's got to make this one happen to make it a true Gragas Pantheon casted in the band so far. You really don't give Shifter casting. You give very few people casting it, but Shifter's one of them. Yeah. That you definitely don't. Definitely give. you don't. The guy is a I don't know what they're all man. cracking up about. We need to listen in on that chip select. I can't believe they banned Pantheon. <laughs> Subi didn't carry last game on that one. See, whoever told the joke was way funnier than you. So <laughs> I definitely need that listen in. Man, that's just mean. Man, Coast definitely very serious about this, though. Uh, two mid lane bans already focused at Shifter. Two down yep. probably means they'll they'll do a third. And it's so gonna be Ari. This might cause Coast to rethink their situation here. Maybe if they were gonna ban a th uh, mid lane champion, mm -hmm. they'll actually save it so they have another option. Since EG exactly will probably go with the Ari shifter, definitely making the comeback with that Lich Bane Ari versus TSM, making it famous. I think it's Krabba making the jokes. He's like really gesturing very heavily, like yellow people looking over at him. He's just cold. He's just making a lot of moves. <laughs> the Jax goes away from Zion Spartan. I don't think anyone's surprised here. So at least for Nintendo, dude, all the junglers aside from Pantheon get through. Nintendo getting first pick of the litter. So many bands uh, for the solo lanes. Uh, definitely going to be able to pick up whatever jungler you want. At least as a first pick jungler for many, many players in the pro scene for obvious reasons. Very, very strong early pressure. And she also has a good answer for Vi, actually. I like having... Elise into Vi because mm -hmm. a lot of the times if Vi's trying to counter gank you, you know, catch out in a bad spot, repel her ultimate, and you could easily turn that around, but they yeah. don't lock it in. Yeah, EG make, I think, a smarter audible there with Olaf, and I feel like Olaf could beat up Elise in the jungle because she'll get you low and then you'll hit W and just like lifesteal at 500% attack speed. Yeah, so with Elise, a lot of it depends on is she getting the jump on you because mm -hmm. her combo is devastating. If yeah. she starts it off, you know, from a bush or something, gets the full cocoon into uh, full rotation of uh, damage combo, then you're at half-life when you start the, the battle with her before That's you true. even get to retaliate. But if uh, the Olaf can dodge uh, at least the cocoon, then he'll be fine in that matchup. And he brings so much early game damage that he could handle himself. Yeah, and it's funny because even, I mean, outside of power concerns where, of course, he's gone for release, Olaf is basically Nintendo's favorite champion. So I feel like he'll know a lot of what Stevie can bring to him and play around it. We'll see if that happens there. Lucian and Thresh picked up here for the bottom lane there, getting mostly the pick of the litter there. Of course, Caitlyn already grabbed for Yellow Pete. We'll see how these guys stack up. Yeah, what kind of support do you want to run into this Thresh? Uh, probably uh, an Annie, Annie, I would say, for Crepo. But Crepo, um, he's actually one of the guys that talks about how Thresh is a very strong counter to Leona, where as mm -hmm. many people uh, go the other way with it. Just because Crepo really good with those timings on the plays. Yeah. We'll have to see if he actually wants to take the, the uh, reverse matchup or not. Well, we've seen actually, like, lane matchups can be very different from what happens in the actual end game matchups. If you think about, uh, I believe it was their second game of the night, uh, where it was like, yeah, you know, they had they had Leona. We had to always be afraid of, uh, of the ability to, of, you know, Saint to start to fight out with Leona ulti. And you know, they managed to play around it there in team fights. There it is going to be Annie picked up. The Shivana likely top lane here for Inox. So happy to play Nice, safe bruiser top laner there. Yeah, that's a and pretty beastly uh, front line here for Evil Ooh. Geniuses. Already in the works. Which way do you think that's going? Top Lee Sin or top Elise? I think it will be top Lee Sin. That's a very Inox style champion. Um, or I Zion. Mean, uh, yeah. Zion. Oh, yeah. Well, Zion, same thing. Inox yeah, and Zion true. are very, very similar, similar guys. players. <laughs> so. Uh, Zion Spartan, uh, big fan of the Hydra Lee Sin. I wonder if he'll mm -hmm. go with that split pushing strategy that has worked out so well for them. We'll see. It's going to be fun to watch for. We did actually see Top Elise. Yeah. It was played in the EULCS this week. Elise is very, very poor at split pushing, though. She's not strong with the wave clear. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes her a long time to shove that up. So, again, yeah, I think it's going to be Nintendo Jungle Elise, Top Lane Lee Sin going up against that Shivana. Ooh, looking at the mid laner for Pobelter here, knowing he's fighting against Needle and it's going to be Zed picked up here for Pobelter. So, very different styles of mid laner shifter. Of course, back to Needle here, happy to play that champion. I do want to see how this game matches up there, because as much as we talk about Lee Sin being a split pusher, he has much less team fight presence than Jax. But this is like the same type of team that Coast ran uh, two weeks ago mm -hmm. when they got their 2 0 week. Yeah, exactly. And the Nidalee heals, you know, they'll help out that Lee Sin, but it's not really the 
the maximum synergy that you get with that Jax, who just obliterates people with any sort of attack speed. They're just playing tricks with us now. We wait till the 10 seconds, and then we'll make the final call on that switch. Yeah. Meanwhile, we can talk about that mid lane, because Pabelter, he's, his love for Zed has been reignited. Uh, he's a lot more confident in the lane matchups uh, now, mm -hmm. after revisiting the champion. You know, yeah. A lot of people just ditched him after the slowing of the shadows, uh, yeah. the little changes to him. Mm -hmm. But it's, come, it's been long enough that people have been putting back the games on him, and yeah. they're getting used to the timing. And once you get used to the timing, he's still just uh, very similar in power to yep. what he used to be. He's, he just does different things. He one-shots you a bit less, but he gets out a little bit better. Now, guys, we've seen the lineups. We've seen the players. Let's get into the rift and do some quick calculations. According to lolesports.com, 57% think the evil geniuses are going to be the intellectual superior in this match. 57%, very close margin here. And even though Coast has the 2-0 record against these guys heading into it, mm -hmm. fans still voting for those clubs. Yep. Voting against the numbers here. See if they can turn it around. Mm -hmm. Team Coast this time, as you said, very similar um, composition to the previous split push that they were going yeah. with. So that makes me think the Hydra Lee Sin is in Zion's future. Um, that I think actually, it's it depends on a pretty good early lane. So I don't know about the jungle pressure from that Elise. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe an early visit top. I mean, it's yeah. a very, very strong tower diving combo. A lot of damage. I mean, the tower dive, though, especially. Oh, yeah. Because they Two both executes. have executes. Um, it's, it's definitely a, a strong move if Nintendo can get control of that top side. You know, I have seen top Lee Sin a little bit in the pro scene. Uh, Insec, the former top laner of KT Bullets, if I have my roster correct, played a Brutalizer Last Whisper Rush Lee Sin. Yeah. And just like, I'm going to burst someone out with Q. He also takes teleport, though. Yeah, so. true. Zion has a different game plan. Uh, he, he just wants to shove Solo by himself all the way into the base of EG. EG with a classic. Uh, Bottom invade here. They they do this quite often. So Coast would probably be very familiar with this strategy. Yeah. Krepo has a stun. Wiz Fusion has not learned a skill yet, so we'll have Flash and the dash if he needs it. Waiting around for him here. EG just waiting on this side. You've got Yellow Pete up to the north a bit, spotting out if someone wants to invade from the river. When will they go for Wiz Fusion? Because right now, Maybe otherwise, Coast are being completely Three. defensive. And like, there's nothing they can do right now where they stand. Their wards aren't available. They can't put anything down. So they just pinged out that bottom or the back side of the red bush there, throwing that volatile spider. They know nobody's in there for EG. That's got to make Wiz Fusion a little bit more antsy. He's all, already walking back and forth, pacing. He's ready for the invade, but knowing that they aren't that top side, definitely going to tip him off. Okay, so the recalls come in. Wiz Fusion managed to watch this try bar successfully. No one came through. And the junglers are going to start, let's see. Bottom side. Bottom side, yes indeed. EG gonna give their jungler a leash. Coast much more selfish in their duo lane. Gonna go for the early lead there against the Caitlyn Annie lane. Well timed Q, and they're gonna start this one out. Snoopy loading his Q, of course, standard Olaf start. Very fast jungle clear for this Olaf. And 10 dude, slowly getting down this camp. At least you have Spiderlings for company. Olaf, at least at friends. Mid lane matchup. Actually, a couple of minions actually missed by Shifter. I guess one, technically. Okay, two minions missed by Shifter. Come on, man. Not even getting pressured yet. Hmm. Well, a lot of uh, Zed's laning phase depends on hitting those Qs, and yeah. uh, Pobelter did just miss his Q as well. So, <sighs> not, on, guys. not a perfect start already for both. Nah. We'll see what happens. Zion Spartan is starting with E, Tempest Cripple. Does magic damage. See if that matters much in this um, thing. Actually, it's kind of interesting because you would normally stack armor against Lee Sin. But if he wants to max Tempest and Cripple, he'll do decent damage against an armor stacker. Good damage there onto Crepo, actually. It's a combo. Nice trade back there for EG. Yeah. Yellow Pete does not back away when his support is attacked, and they get a favorable trade. Very well done by him. Now that the double buffs are up for at least that level three first gank, see what he can do with this one, because that's one of her, her strongest uh, moments in time. Placing the war does mean that Pobelter should be aware of the presence of Nintendo topside river here. Mm -hmm. He pinged out the route that uh, Nintendo took right there. Looks like he's safe for this one. And Daydream went deeper utility tree. Had enough gold for two potions, whereas Crepper only had enough for one. So both these guys one potion deep under their opening builds. But Daydream back up to full there after that trade. We'll see if they can make some more way 
in Zion Spartan up to level three. Just one point and everything, pretty standard stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of ways you can build the Lee Sin. You can actually max any of his abilities first and, and have a reason to do so. So I want to keep track on what Zion goes for here. And round out bottom lane, even though they helped out with the pull, because Caitlyn uh, is great at shoving, constantly auto-attacking, and they did a pretty good job in that trade, they were able to get the minion wave back in their favor. And we can see that Ooh, the ping, coast. ping up top there for Elise. All right, there's no ward. He might be coming for that early uh, dive I was looking for. See where it goes with this one. He's so far just chilling in the river. But Belter looking for damage on Shifter. Gets a bit. Again, Qs don't land. True. He's not going to get that harass that he wants. Just regening off the Doran's ring. Doran's shield for Belter, meaning one. only little. Yeah, lands the Q. There we go. And it's going to be, and I believe you can always see that ward go down. So. Coast should know about that lane ward, but it's just that was be the recall for yeah, Nintendo. That was 15 seconds up top for Nintendo, uh, not getting anything out of it. Uh, just pure waste of time right there. Poor jungle, at least. Not the best start. Meanwhile, Snoopy trying to make something happen. Already with a ward in this push, though, might be wasted time for him as well. Yeah, this feels weird because the lane's not pushing out anyway. There's, there's no way. They aren't playing aggressive either, so. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Snoopy's going to waste his time here as well. Damage on a Daydream. They go for it. Like ghost. Flashed by Daydreaming, though. It's all he's going to get. Yeah. Talk about wasting time. He just walks right on a trap. Easy follow-up stun there from Crepo, and they get a flash. All right. It's going to be damage on the Inox now again. Zion Spartan level 5 here. Same for Inox. Of course, maxing burnout. Pretty standard. The Lee Sin. Two points in Tempest Cripple. You can always tell who the aggressor in the lane is going to be, though. Uh, Doran's Blade started uh, versus Doran's Shield started. Yeah. Obviously, Zion trying to shove. As many auto attacks as he can. Uh, it also benefits the life steal that he gets from his safeguard. So yeah, uh, it's going to help him out in the sustain game. Let's see what he can get out of this one. Five health per auto attack. Extra 10 AD. Going to leech a bit. His Fujin 43 minions to Yellow Pete's 36. So a small, small lead here. Remember, this is a lane where at one point EG got three kills by about three minutes. Yellow Pete getting two of them, and the lane still went even. So as far as history is concerned, Coast have done pretty well in this dual lane matchup. Right now, a small lead of four minions. We'll see where it goes from here. But they're both getting close to the money for a BF sword. About 200 gold shy. Oh, this is, a, this is a perfect time to go for the dive. And I like how Snoopy is in the area. Ooh. Nice choice. Very well predicted dive. But oh, Zion goes for the dive solo. And Zion finds him alone. Level six. Makes it happen. Makes the push happen just in time. Snoopy unable to help. Nicely played. Wow, Zion. <laughs> And some excited fans. Wow! <laughs> Nintendo wanted it. Snoopy's got to watch himself there, though. Nintendo making some plays for him himself. And they're able to get uh, control of the turret. That means another wave that will at least die to it. Yeah, and split decision as to go for tower damage, though. But they got the best of both worlds there. So they don't get the turret, but they got the kill in the top laner. And because of the damage on Snoopy, he didn't even get to leech the experience himself. So you, you said, yeah, the minions got lost. They completely did. Plus, and even though... EG saw there was a pink ward in there, and the axes from Olaf uh, landing onto Nintendo. They weren't able to go clear it out, so now he has to clear it out late. He lis he misses out on minions while Look he's doing this. this. Though. Another bush gank here, Nintendo this is constantly good. chugging those potions even at max health. He just oh, hit level six. six. He has his enough fury right. for his. Uh, a slow. Oh, set. he misses a cocoon. Whoopsies. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna shove the wave, maybe one more, then they're gonna go back. We'll see what items they go for. Shifter opens up with a cloth armor and a tier of the goddess. Wants the mana, the but wants the armor. He's showing up there because he spent so much time in that bush. Not only did he waste that time, but he also tipped yeah. off EG that there's nobody down by a dragon to contest it. Great call here from EG, immediately collapsing. That was maybe five seconds after they just saw Elise up top. Boom, everybody's in place. Great objective for EG. 500 gold lead despite the top lane gank making it happen and pushing Subi back to base. Well done here. Both junglers sitting on a spirit stone and boots. Inox getting a quick push up the top lane. And it is going to be team at. So you're right. It's going to be at least a team at here for Zion Spartan. Why don't go attack damage focused? Points, by the way, going into Tempest and Cripple. Magic damage for him. A lot of AoE, a lot of wave clear. See what he does with it. Nintendo level 6 blue buffs respawning here. We'll see where they go. Yeah, he's a little late if he wants to go for uh, any kind of invade. And it would even be a bad decision because now at this point, Olaf does have his ulti. Even if he gets cocooned, he can come out on top. Nintendo just put a lot of money into that vision control, though. So I really want to pay attention to this pink ward placement. 
if he's if he's looking at putting it in that top bush of the river, then he's not only going to be able to place his, but remove the EG pink ward. True. Get a two for one. It'll be really powerful. They can make it happen. Oh, he's going for it, and he pinged it out. Yeah. Very right. happy about that one. They do know it's warded, though. He put the ward down first. So they'll be like, by the way, avoid this brush, but that's fine. Not that dangerous for these guys. Coast. Shifter in the mid lane, back on Needly once more. 71 to 85 in minions. Small lead to Poe Belter in that matchup. Look at the 80 carries, small lead to his fusion, but otherwise these guys pretty much trading equally. You see the gold now only 200. So it was 500 when the dragon went down. Shrunk a little bit more here. These 80 carries just going for their bloodthirsters and starting out the game normally. Nupe is just hard farming as well on Olaf. He wants to get beefy before he makes any action happen. Interesting choice there. Uh, whenever you have a top laner that's already losing the lane, it is dangerous to try and go up there too. Because Nintendo has shown a tendency to continue to gank that lane. And if you run into a 2 versus 2 situation where your top lane is already going to be behind, mm -hmm. then not only are you going to lose one lane, but you also lose control of your jungle. And I think it's a good job by Snoopy. Oh, flash play the yellow Pete. Oh, the hook lands afterwards. Whoa. Well played, Daydreaming. Makes the kill happen out of nowhere. So Nintendo, this visit bottom, very, very successful. He placed that, oh uh, no, that was a previously played. That was Krepos, or Daydreaming. Daydreaming's yeah. pink ward in the tri bush. Well done by these guys. Shifter's gonna clear away his minions some more. For Belter. 16 minions, for Belter's leading. Heading towards the bottom, they spot at least a little bit. Not too much found. Pressure on this turret, but they've gotta be careful not to get counterattacks. attacks he's waiting in the wings. No gank comes through though, Nintendo's safe. Now I want to watch uh, Pabelter's gonna find the progress ward. in the mid lane here because Pabelter is actually the best option for a counter split push uh, for Zion Spartan. Mm -hmm. Towards the end game, they they actually aren't gonna want Inox up there trying to go head to head. They're probably gonna opt for Pabelter to take over those duties, and the first meeting between Zion and Pabelter will really tell a lot about how the rest of the game is gonna go. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth, definitely I definitely want to keep an eye on that matchup. For what it's worth, I really like Lee Sin in that matchup. Because you can kick Zed away as soon as he ults in. And at least he puts his W down in time, he can't come back. And then Zion can just like full heal off a minion wave with his W. So I want I want to see how it actually pans out. Because Bubble might be able to burst him out all at once. The fight is going to go very quickly. Yeah. When they do mid. And when they do meet, so. Might even be walking down here. I li like that defensive ward that was placed by Snoopy after his pink one was dead. Well, another stun oh, and a Krepo. Man. Good bye. Daydream mix it up with an ignite tick. 1-0-1. One, one. Blocked by his fusion. Nice. Protecting his jungler. The fight here in the top lane. Snoopy's coming soon. Zion Spartan and Inox down to have about half HP each, but Inox getting the better of him right here. No. Uh-oh, he's still going in, but there's an Olaf nearby. The Flash Dragon yeah. form is not going to be enough. Zion jumps to a trinket. Lane, especially lane ganks against Lee Sin, often extremely ineffective uh, because he has so many escapes. So not much going to happen there. I think that might have been a, a little bit desperate from Snoopy because Nintendo is camping <laughs> bottom. He wants to make something happen. He laughs at him. Laughs and puts the recall down. Zion, half HP, not afraid at all. Tags him. But these two goes in onto war, kicks Inox back. And there comes the leaves where they have the damage they need. Zion running away with Ignite on him. Goes he into that fight if he needs to. They did one for one Nintendo versus Snoopy. Not good for Nintendo. Has to flash away. One for one fight. Whew. Close there. Close. Um, but yeah, it is going to be Snoopy with control of the lane. So he has the option of pushing it. Both of them back off and leave it. Yellow Pete is not having a good time in this lane. He is losing health constantly. And the fights are going better and better for Coast right here. After we might have been right about this read. Lucky for Pete though, he's got a vamp scepter up on uh, Wiz Fusion, so he's trying to sustain as best he can under the turret. Get as many autos off as possible. It's gonna be the minion skill. Every time we look at Shifter, he's like wave clearing as Cougar form under his turret. Pabelter is constantly pushing him and then leaving, trying to make plays, and he can't find anything to do. He's constantly looking, gets halfway down the river, and is like, nope, they see me. Well, there's not a lot of options right now for Shifter. He's gone with a tier start for oh, Nidalee. Sure. There's no power there. He's just trying to get as much money as possible from farming mm -hmm. and stack up the tier. Now that he goes back to base, you know, purchasing that nice large uh -oh. rod, 
plays are possible. Nintendo is pulled out through some good damage coming across. Sepulter has the ulti. But of course, Nintendo could repel the application. Not Whoa. in human form, though. That is not good for Nintendo. He should not have switched forms there. Good pick out there, Pobelter. That's going to be really good news for Pobelter. He can finish his Brutalizer with that and go to see if he can match with Zion up top. Take some turret shots for his trouble, but you can see this turret taking more and more pain down about one-fifth. No wards for Zion, though, and his trinket's down. So, no, it's back up. I take it back. He's got wards, too. So he's ready to jump away if he needs to. All right. Snoopy has to be drawn to the mid lane after the aggression that Pobelter just put out. So... They do know where EG's jungler is. Uh, could open up the rest of the lanes for more aggression here. As you can see, Zion pressing Inox very, very hard. Yeah, he's doing some good damage here. If Inox runs out of potions, he's going to have to give up the turret without jungle pressure. Actually, the recall comes up from Inox right now, and no one's coming to help. So Zion Spartan might soon be rewarded with a uh, a turret kill for his Lee Sin versus Shivana matchup. Same thing for Belter, though. And Shifter still just as squishy as he used to be. True. Um, Cloth armor not that defensive. Zion, 250 gold for killing the turret and being near it. Good ward sweep by Pebbles. are already the red trinkets, three red trinkets this early on for EG. They are already trying to get vision control. The next successful gank, either mid or bottom, will turn into a dragon though, and that dragon will be worth much more than the first. So this mm -hmm. dead even game, just so close right now, yeah. will easily be tipped here. Did Nintendo sneak past that pink? He's trapped himself in this pink. In the in the dragon pit. Uh oh, getting slow by Snoopy. Puts the ulti on. He's not gonna get CC'd at all. Lantern Takes comes a in. lot of damage though. Yeah. Down about two thirds. Nintendo about the same. Yeah, Both top laners close. immediately coming down. Hey guys, dragon fight time. Yep. Everybody's joined the party. They're fighting in the mid lane now. Level 11 for Zion. Doesn't want to go in. Scared of Pobelter for good reason. Ruin King is done for Pobelter though. He has hit a pretty big power spike right now. Scary man to watch out for in fights. Yeah. He and actually, level 11. He actually had enough to finish the whole Ruin King instead of going with the Brutalizer. Very big spike for him right now. The ward coverage around this Dragon Pit, very important for both teams. I like this one from Snoopy because Elise and Lee Sin, very, very easy for them to do Dragon over the back. Mm -hmm. So even if you have Vision leading into the pit, you actually have to have Vision of the Dragon itself, see the life bar, make sure they aren't sneaking it behind the wall. See if they can find it. Shifter does not dodge the Q. We got the minions some more. These guys just keep playing back and forth. But the bottom lane turret, the push is just there for Nintendo. Looks like no one's there to answer it. Inox went top here, but Zion stayed bottom. So they take a turret. Now they have control of the dragon area. They actually even started up. Inox is on his way. This could be a very explosive fight. This will be interesting. It's going to be a 5 on 5 pretty soon. Hook onto Snoopy. He's going to go in for this one. Ulti not yet available for a second. The Vulter almost there for Daydream, and he would die if they go for it. Cocoon's going to stop the ulti in, but there's Timbers onto two. His fusion low on health. In comes Zed. Zion's party's going to kick him back. The low on health, burning down. They're going to flash over the wall. Nintendo still trying to run. He might die as well. It's going to be the ulti coming across. Inox picks up one, but the answer comes back in. The Vulter does burn to death thanks to Zion Spartan, but EG thinks they have control over the dragon. Down to half. Oh, the Crepo. Spear's still available, though. Blue Nintendo's buff dead. on There's no smite. There's no smite. It's picked up with the Chaplain anyway. Nintendo, oh man, doesn't even need to be part of the team. Zion Spartan picks up the kill. Chaplain lands on the yellow Pete. Zion shows up for Inox. He's going to have the slow up soon. Can he keep chasing? Wow, Shifter made so much happen there. This is really, really bad for EG. Not only did they lose the dragon to the spear, but they also lost control of the map, and it will be another turret. All right, let's take a look again here, uh, because Snoopy, he got hooked, and Daydream and went on him because uh, they had just done an exchange down bottom. Meanwhile, Crepo stunning all the damage here. Snoopy thinks they've got control of the area, but since the ult went on, Elise was going to die already. Wow. wow, more people dying while we're Zion's watching the replay. Zion's does some damage. Didn't even need to ult flash for it, but that's fine. Eight to three, mid lane turrets dead. Three zero on turrets. Wow. Coast doing great this game. All right. Too much happening there, even during the replay. Everybody down, the tower. So Coast really running away with this one. Now Pobelter is trying to get his split push game rolling here. That's pretty much their only answer at this point. Trying to split push that bottom and siege up with the Caitlyn. Yellow Pete definitely a couple inches away from death there. Has to watch out from all the skill shots. Now bottom lane turret gets successfully split pushed though. Pobelter taking that one. Coast not afraid of that one. First turret to go down for their team. I want to point out Wiz Fujin's weird build, though. He opened up with a BF sword, 
And now he's going towards Ruin King. And it might be Ruin King Infinity Edge, or he just like wants to cut this for lifesteal and go somewhere else, but I've not seen this particular opening from an AD carry before. Yeah, interesting split there from him. Probably had to do with the gold values on backing. That's uh, what a lot of the answers are whenever we see those split buys. Yeah. It costs 600 to go from Vamp Scepter to Cutlass. And so he could have waited 200 gold for a Bloodthirster and just decided, now nah, I'll do something else here. See where it goes. It'll be interesting. One does not simply wait for 200 gold. Not in the base. In the base. Kill a couple of minions, then do some damage. Any Yellow Peach? Who does have a Bloodthirster done. Rune King does come out for Wiz Fusion. So. They're, they're getting a top turret for this. Uh, yeah. Pressure mid, though. This, Inox, is, this is good splitting. Inox should be able to do this. Now, I, we've seen this comp so much here from Coast, where there's the Elise, Nidalee, and Thresh combo. Yeah. It's all about the uh, one skill shot landing, chaining into multiple skill shots. We just see those three together so often. Mm -hmm. And it also just doubles the importance of blue buff for that team, because they really need to be able to keep up Shifter's mana. So uh, not only will he be looking to get every single one of his blue buffs, but control of the EG blue buff also extremely important to them. So now that they have this lead, yeah. they're expecting a lot more vision into the jungle of EG here from Coast. Currently, they haven't been able to get anything down up there. Uh, but now, since they do have control, maybe they'll be able to have some uh, scouting missions. Let's see what they do with this one. Still only one red, tr one red trinket for Coast. So they're not really removing vision. They're happy to get just wards up for themselves. Don't worry, the spear, okay. spear missed. Camera guy, you're cool. He was trying to juke it himself. Fuck him, the cursor yeah. away from there. He got scared, he had the nightmares. Cur the cursor can take damage. Inox kicked over the wall into Daydream, and Flay's not going to make him stop. Inox jumping back over as a dragon. Looks like they're going to be safe, but top lane push has begun. Inox is not available for this fight. Coast going to back off as well, though. This is an interesting dynamic here, because they're such a poke-heavy team, but they're the ones pushing. Uh, they really rely on Thresh for all of the counter engage here. If you can set up a good box, then it will really um, allow them to continue to throw out multiple spears. They're just looking to sit here as long as possible. As soon as Shifter hits one onto one of those priority targets, uh, that's a low eh, priority yeah. target. <laughs> okay, Snoopy getting a CC. That has to run backwards there. Doesn't pop his ulti yet, but he's squishy now. These Man. tanks losing health pretty rapidly. Javelin's still coming through. I think they might be one wave away from getting this turret. Zion Spartan going through the bush that does have a ward in it, and he still lands his skill shot. He must have ran to his omen second. So he kind of was aware of what you were talking about before the Pope Belter oh, yeah. Zion Spartan matchup, and he's like, I can't let Zed beat me. Exactly. All right, they go uh, pretty weak on the turret this time, yeah. actually. Not a lot of offensive wave clear. Right. Snoopy goes hard. He buffs the ulti, pops the ghost. He goes in for Nintendo. There comes Pobelka. They find Wizfusion. He is likely to die in this one. So much pain coming across from Pop's barrier. The shield from Zion Spartan keeps him alive as he kites back Pobelter in the front lines. Not where he wants to be. Zion Spartan doing the acrobatics. Can he get to the lantern and get out? He's trying. There he goes. Oh, Safeguards to the lantern and makes his way out. One for zero in an acrobatic battle. And Nintendo lived as well. Yep. 50 HP, he was down to right back up there. They've got a blue buff Nidalee on their team. Easy to re-engage on the Siege. Great job by Coast kiting out there. They were able to effectively deal with all the hard engage here from EG. Stupe reads the front, uh, leads the charge here as he should. The Belter flashing in and getting the full combo onto Wiz. They actually blocked the ace in the hole. That was huge. Full culling to Pabelter. And this is where Zion finishes him off. The knee to the back. So he could either safeguard a Wiz or the Lantern. Lantern looks way cooler. Yeah, and Wiz, right. and Wiz backed off there, so style points for Zion. And it's two shields. Once you land, you get your safeguard shield and the Lantern shield. Make sure you don't take too much damage on the way out. In addition to the style points. What about there? Back to the bottom line. Level 13 of this guy has his Brutalizer done. The last Whisper coming soon. So that'll help cut through the massive armor stack Zion got from his Randuits. Looks like Zion's going to keep going for attack damage, though. Interestingly to note, uh, not oh, a Slate there Stone Rush laner. There's the ulti in on towards Daydream, and not the best spot for uh, poor Pobelta. They're trying to run away. Q lands with Fusion, gets the kill. A little bit overextended there. No wards and Crepit and a half. Man, Coaster making these plays down bottom without even extra ward coverage in the jungle. Yeah. Uh, nobody really with good vision on the map right now. And that's... That's basically uh, sh what exactly what Shifter wants. He's mm -hmm. glad if everybody's blind in this game because it makes it so much easier 
for him to land uh, high priority spears. Zion too will be on equal footing. Tyr gonna take some damage now. Tier two, it's a five versus four for now. Too many blindly sent to us. I'm sorry, I won't give it to you. <laughs> five versus three. There we go. Tyr's gonna go down. Inox also not in the best spot, but can turn into a dragon to get away. Zion jumps forward, doesn't land the Q on a yellow peat. Don't think it would have gone for it anyway, but still would have looked cool. Well, they're back up in the mix. It's going to be five turrets down to two right now. Coast still in control pretty well here. Baron is on the table. Dragon's dead for now. They also have the timer for, uh, for the blue. Oh, they don't have the timer, but they have the camp cleared for the EG blue buff. Mm. So when it does come up, uh, they will know about it. They have to go right. deal with this top wave, though. That's such a giant wave at their top turret. Will be wow. a small lull in the action as posts go to defend their perimeter. So as we kind of go back into a lull, I want to point something out. When we saw the gold tab up a second ago, so Pobald is the only guy who even has seven thousand gold on the team. He's at eight thousand for himself, so he's very far ahead of his teammates. Whereas Zion's at nine k, and his fusion and shifter are both at eight or almost nine thousand themselves. So the big three carry forces are significantly far ahead of their counterparts here from EG. Yeah, and it's making the head-to-head -head matchups very difficult. Because you just like, well, I just have a better AD carry and just a better top laner right now. Popelter has so much pressure on him. And a lot of the wins for EG, too, it is Popelter who takes control of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't able to do that this time because uh, wasn't able to get out of lane quickly enough uh, and go affect other areas. But man, is he trying his darndest. And look at this build from his fusion. I was wondering where it would go. It, it is Ruin King Infinity Edge. And I just I like going back to it because I'm an AD carry player and it's interesting to me when they do different things with the builds because the order is usually really important. But, so it's a lot of upfront damage. He's going to hope to land crits on a pretty low crit chance. Let's see where he goes next with it. Shifter has added Morella Namakon to his build. He said, you know, I don't really need magic resist. It's pretty much an entirely physical damage enemy team. Uh -huh. So it doesn't go for Athenes. Just it's says, you know, tier Morella Namakon's enough it, for me. It also ensures that he gets his power boost really quick. Yeah. You don't have to wait a long time to finish a whole death cap. Boom, you've got extra cooldown reduction, a giant chunk of AP. Yeah. And they want to press the lead while they have control of the game right now. Keep up this massive amount of pressure. Pobelter not with the rest of the team. Oh, they go for the, the hard engage. Oh, the Krepo, but it's going to be a stun on Nintendo. The Q coming across. Do they have the damage to take down poor Annie? Zion Spartan sure does. Jumps in now, gets a double kill, has a lander, gets away safely. 2-0 fight. Javelin on Pobelter. Fight's going better and better and better for Coast. Yeah, they don't have a talisman upgrade on EG, so it's very hard for them to run away, disengage from this Coast team. And now they can chain this. So much vision control on the red side. You know, they did ignore the blue, but Baron buff, the purple buff, much more important. The Coast can secure it after that kill. Great turn. What else they got here, Baron? Yeah, it's going to get popped. mid it goes down as a trade, but heck, worth it for Coast right there. Two of three dragons, one Baron. Let's check the replay. All right, so spear, another spear on a Kreppel. That's been brutal. Landed several of those this game. And once Zion comes in, there's no chance for them getting away. Giant, giant uh, double kill there for him. And Inox flash thinking the kick might have been for him. It wasn't. It, it executed Snoopy there, but yeah. that was the flash there for Inox. Pobelter on the split push. Uh, we have our first chance to watch Pobelter versus Zion Spartan. It's not even fair at this point, though, because Zion's been getting so many kills with the rest of his team. And he's chasing him down. Baron. Yeah, well, he's got Nintendo cutting him off. Gotta feel bad for Pobelter in this situation. Q lands. He's toast. Ooh, the Rune King active. Yeah, that's a kick in the back of the head. Zion Spartan picking up another kill. It wasn't a fair fight. It's two for one, but, you know, still, he won the battle. Eight, one, and two, by the way, top lane Lee in The first we've seen of the LCS at all, at least in a very long time, certainly this season. Yep. Oh, Lubop gets got picked it. up by Inox. That's going to be nice for him. Yeah. Axe not going to land. Got to count those small wins yep. when you're down like this. So they were able to take that red at least. Trying to defend. Outer turret, though. All the pings are blue, so Coast feeling very confident about running in on this one. Delayed defense here from EG. Oh, there he goes! Krepofall! Tabris comes in on to two. Let's see if they can get much more out of this one. Nintendo trying to run away. Get some McHales. Uh, there comes a javelin to the back. The battle's still going on. Hook onto Inox. The jump into the back line. Zion Spartan maybe over Xena. Can't quite find the kill on a yellow peat. Jumps oh. back over the wall. Nice escape there. A one for zero as Inox falls. The mid lane siege still going on. They really wanted Zion there. That would be a legendary shutdown. Good chunk of change, but they weren't able to grab it. And put Belter on the outside here. Man, we really said 
Mm -hmm. Solo lane focused teams, both of these guys. Turns out though, Zion, much bigger influence on this game. Yeah. And it was just corrected. Inox did play top Leeson before uh, this split. Turns out Zion just having a better game this time around. Making the champion work. They're going to push down in towards the mid inhibitor. Zion zoning the entire team out by himself. You don't want to deal with this guy. Inhib's going to be going down 29 minutes in. Baron buff still on these guys as well for a minute and a half. And Coach looking so good here. Yeah. Really, really hard here for EG. They don't have a, a whole ton of options. It's pretty much uh, their, their bright star, Pavelter, going to have to find some people off guard and, you know, hope for some some numbers in his favor. EG maybe look for a bush gank now. They can't even defend at turrets, so they really have to catch somebody just making a mistake. We'll see if they can find it. Pavelter is still he's, rich. He has the damage to kill people. Here. He's searching for that solo kill. Yeah, it, it, if it comes from anyone, it's him. Well, Dragon popped up, so Pavelter has changed his course. Hey, I mean, it's worth more than a kill. I would take Dragon over champion kill almost any day. Yeah, Helps the team. it's a great comeback cool. That's a lot of bonus experience, too. 1,200. 1,200 gold for that one. It's going to help them. They're down 12,000. So 10 more dragons, and they're even. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a Give us an hour. We'll be good. That's a drop in the bucket so far. The tenth of the bucket. Small bucket. Fills up with 10 drops? Yeah, Man. apparently. That's a small You just did the math. Right. Yeah, It's a thimble. Dropping the thimble here. Coast looking for the bottom lane push again. Javelin smacks the minion in the face. You heard that sound. You know he killed that poor minion. There's its soul right there. By the way, minions have souls. You just learned. You just learned that? I mean... Thresh has been in the game forever. <laughs> I don't pay attention. I'm not a support player. Not forever. <laughs> Only some of them know. Some are redheads. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh... Oh no, Yellow Fiend, no, please! Oh, good oh, no. buy! He drops. Crepo also down to half. Not the best thing right here. Inox trying to run away. He's going to survive. Culling doesn't do as much damage he, to him. He said, sorry guys, I will at least shield you from this culling though. Yep, unfortunately 1-4-1, one, and one, but a lot of armor on that guy. The push in towards the Nexus. Two inhibs dead. The jump comes in. Zion Spartan uh. just making things happen. Down goes one. Can they find more? Inox drops low. They got uh, Pobelter as well. Everyone is just dying right now in Coast. Barely taking damage. Oh, Zane Dreamin! Oh, he goes down. Ruins his desk. He he face palms the desk. He like head about at his keyboard. Takes his perfect game away. 1-1-13. One, one, Daydreamin, shame on you for being greedy for the kills. But Coast are going to take sole control of fifth place with the win over Evil Geniuses. And Dion uh, really doing his work again. Carrying oh, yeah. Coast here. Beastly plays from him up top. I'm happy that we did get to see that Hydra Lee Sin, though. Mm -hmm. He's a big fan of it. Yeah, Got it to works. show that it does work in kind of play here at LCS. Did a great job. I guess one of the typical top winners, too. Tanky top winner, Shivana. He at level six first, put the execute down right when there's level disparity, six first five. Yeah, I was I was prepping this one with the, oh yeah, Lee Sin and Elise are great tower diamond combo. Uh, early on on Shibata. He did it all by himself. <laughs> Nintendo was just there to screen out the other junglers so they could have yep. their one versus one fight. And Zion came out on top. Turns out you just need Elise in. You don't need the Elise in general. So, made it happen. It was well played. Of course, Zion Spartan. Man, I just, I like that sort of team. 9 1 and 6 for him, right? 15 of his team's 18 kills. He got his finger on that one. Top lane Lee Sin is just so much fun. One of my favorite champions as well. And you just get to feel awesome. He didn't rush a sight stone. He kept buying combat stats. He just relied on buying wards himself and his trinket for the acrobatics. He went for the awesome plays. Made him happen. to safeguard to the lantern instead yeah. of the just normal. As long as he got things to jump to, yeah. made it happen. Bought enough wards, though. He always had, I think, like two in his inventory. So any pressure of top lane Lee Sin's out there, keep wards in your inventory. Use them. You can get other items out of the Sight Stone. Once again, the Learn unsung hero, though, Shifter, 1 in 10, uh, or 1 0 in 10. Yeah, 10 say. assists there. Mm -hmm. And he landed a lot of spears that didn't get you know, kills or assists, but just took a person out of the fight. Krepo, yeah. whenever Krepo caught one spear, he was pretty much done mm -hmm. for that entire fight. He had to go back. And that's the, really the things you have to look for is there's a lot of unglamorous plays that happen, right? If, whether it's like a jungler waiting for a counter gank and like that was the right choice to wait around even if nothing happens for it. Mm -hmm. And it's that Javelin's like, yeah, I don't get an assist for it, I don't get any extra gold for it, but the AD carry gets sent back to base, so we get this turret. A lot of facilitation there. 
And it's funny, too, because we know Shrift to be one of the best mid laners and one of sort of the carry forces on this team. Mm -hmm. And even though his score doesn't reflect it, right? He's not on like an assassin, on like a high damage carry sort of champion. He's like, but my skill shot usage is going to give us objectives. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so yeah. The, uh, the Nintendo screening up top where he was just camping in bushes. Mm -hmm. Just making sure that nobody interferes with Zion's play up top. That's true. Just leave him be. As long as we're protect we're the part that one versus one, then he's going to... It worked out. Work. Also worth noting, Nintendo retook the record. Ooh. Two deaths this game. Still one, so Were happy. we checking with Kiwi after the last game? Yeah, he got four, so he, he re ah, overtook okay. it. Yeah, all right, guys, going to check in how the teams stack up after today. In first place, with a little breathing room now, is Team Solo Mid. And in second, we still have Cloud9. 11 wins, four losses. In third place, and tying their longest streak ever with their third straight win, it's CLG. <laughs> Dignitas holds on to fourth place. And Coast, now just one game back in fifth place. I got to say, everyone above that, just two games apart as well. In a tie for sixth now is Evil Geniuses and Curse. And in last place, but showing new life with the win today is XDG. Now the LCS returns tomorrow with four big matches, starting with Cloud9 versus Team Solo Mid. Then Evil Geniuses will face off against Dignitas, followed by XDG, hoping to ride their momentum when they battle CLG. And our final and our final LCS game is going to be Coast versus Curse there on the fourth game. The action gets underway Sunday at noon Pacific, 9 p.m. Central European. Now we're going to throw it over to Riv and Zyrene for the North American Challenger Series as they kick off the second half of the Spring Series. Take it away. <laughs> 